from the wall for near 200 years. And all the current trees are cultivated plants derived from the original seed brought by, to, by Bartram to Philadelphia. And it is named after Benjamin Franklin and Altahama River. The spellings are a little different. Uh, this is the new spelling of the river, but it's been named to, according to the older one. Uh, this is uh, the older Bartram with George Washington. And William Bartram wrote a book, Travels, which he mentioned about the discovery of this plant. This book had a nice uh, uh, effect on the world literature and romantic writers of the day, such as Wordsworth, Coleridge, and Francois René Chauterbrand. And the American wilderness became a study of nature. So it was a major contribution by Bartram's. And this is his color photographs uh, sent to the Royal Society. Now, Franklinia altahama is a rather peculiar tree. It has only few flowers. The flower only blooms late in the July and August, and there are only few flowers. And uh, basically, it's open for hardly for a day, or at the most, 18 hours. It opens by noon time and closes is birds in the evening, and it's very interesting. The bumblebees and other insects which pollinate, they're entrapped because there is possibly a volatile nectar. That was the beginning of my study. I went to a friend of mine who had this rare tree, and uh, I was very fascinated by the bumblebees. They seem to be intoxicated. I just want to take a photograph if that bumblebee Blew away, that was the end of my research. <laughs> I had to pinch her, she won't fly. And she fall off as if she was drunk. So I thought it was a narcotic plant. And uh, the host of this nursery, he said, let's not talk about the feds coming here. So we did not do any research for two years. And just to describe a little bit of this uh, unusual thing. So after pollination, the flower buds falls off this next morning, and you're left with an ovary, which is like a, a large, small ball. It's very interesting. It stays on the tree for 12 to 15 months. If you take it out, it will not germinate. Germination rate is only less than 10%. And it's very interesting that you don't see any trees growing around it. And one, another interesting thing one of my herbal students found out a weed whacker caused some injury to the trunk of the tree, and it has a rapid healing. So we are suspicious it may have some healing power as well. As my habit is since very young age, if I see any unusual tree, I eat the bark, the leaves. I just leave the flowers for later on. And I tasted these leaves, and it tasted like tea. Now, if any of you has eaten green tea leaves, please raise your hand. Okay, so if you want to try that today, you don't need HPLC, you don't need mass spectroscopy. I will offer each of you a small piece of the leaf. You chew it. It is a tea leaf. So that was the beginning of my research. It tasted like tea, green tea. So that was the beginning. The objective was to determine if it has catkins, xanthes, theophylline, and other constituents of green tea. So TLC, thin layer chromatography, was done. I chose Chromadex. It has a good reputation for doing studies on tea products. It showed strong bands over here, which were consistent with two or three of the uh, polyphenols in green tea. Now, these were the things which were found in this one. It contained epic, uh, catkin. I'm sorry, this thing is catkins, epicatkins, and epiglycrocatins. So it had three of the constituents of a green tea. So we wanted to see whether, by molecular weight, they are something. So we did the mass spectroscopy 
microscopic analysis and the weight charge particle was noted to be 291 and 443, which in comparison with the literature are completely in agreement with the products of EC and ECG. So, in brief, we have a, an American tea plant, we had it for 247 years. It has same characteristics, this one, this one. So, conclusions are that Franklinia tree is an American tea plant and it, it leaves contain catkins similar to green tea but without caffeine. And as we know, these polyphenolic compounds are known to be antioxidant, so it should have the same benefits as a regular tea. Some people ask me the questions. In black tea, you have 80 milligrams in a cup of tea. You have 50 milligrams of caffeine. A lot of people don't know a cup of tea and a cup of coffee has a similar caffeine. The difference is, in tea, it is slow bound, it's bound with a tannin. So you have a slow release of caffeine, that's why you don't get a buzz. But the amount of caffeine is almost equal. In green tea, you have higher catechins, and it is very close to white tea. Right now, it ranks very close to rooibos, which is a South African bush. And we, we, we have a limitation because of the facilities. What is the best time to obtain these tea leaves how to harvest and nurture or do something with it to produce the best products. So if it is used the early products, like early birds, it is close to white tea. The difference between Franklinia and the tea is it is almost has no caffeine. It's a decaffeinated in nature. So just a few thoughts. What is the origin of Franklinia? It's a long discussion. In my opinion, along with some other botanists, it did not originate in the United States. It was brought by French settlers. It does not exist in Southeast Asia. The United States is the only home it knows. So it is really a foreign born, but it is naturalized, and it does not exist anywhere else. So we have to accept it. Uh, what is the best way to harvest? We're still working. We have some suggestion. Uh, it does not have PAs. We check all medicinal plants, we try whether they have PA alkalized because they are hepatotoxic. It has a mild antibacterial effect. The most important thing which we started with, it has a sedative or euphoria effect. We use it in fibromyalgia and many other pain conditions. And some of my students were very innovative. They thought that uh, just making a simple tea was not the answer. They start smoking. It works better. So if you take a, a young leaf and make a smoking uh, instrument, or so something like smoke, it does have euphoria. People are giggly for six hours. So it does have some euphoric effects. Uh, just a few more questions. Why it is important? The teas, people who drink tea regularly have less heart attacks, strokes, cancer, Parkinson's disease and osteoporosis. That's a fact. This is shown by the studies. And we have a small group of people we call Friends of Franklinia. And in, even in West Virginia, we have really honestly changed hundreds of people to drink tea than liquor and coffee. In fact, we never serve coffee in our herb classes. Uh, we do also have a tea festival. This is the only kind of tea festival which I started this many years ago in the United States. According to my own research, there are at least 500 to 1,200 medicinal plants yet to be discovered. That's based on a golden ratio formula. If you take a geographic area, at least 20% of the angiosperm has a bioactive material. Like England, 1,600 angiosperm about 320 medicinal plants. And you can keep going on, India, China, 
and Amazon has 56,000 and your sperm. So in my calculation, we should find 15,000 bioactive material of medicinal plant. And my own suggestion is that we can find probably new medicinal plants in our backyard, and we don't have to travel some exotic place, National Geographic sponsored, somebody sitting with naked, half-naked people, and try to be look chic. You can do these studies on your backyard. And I always plug in for my festival, and I'll be glad to answer any questions.